Hello, it's me, it's Johnny, and I am back with all of the lifeboat, and I have a bit of explaining to do. You'll probably realise fairly quickly on that a lot has changed since the last video, and I wanted to explain. When I started this project, I knew that I could only really do short form content or long form content. I know that there will be channels out there that you follow that do long form and short form, but I'm doing this project entirely on my own. I don't have anyone to stand there filming me do anything. I only have this one phone as well, and I film everything on it, and I, I can't film vertical and horizontal at the same time. I don't, I don't even have a tripod. You're currently stacked up on a toolbox with a bit of duct tape to hold you in place, and nine times out of 10, if you see a video, I'm using a, a shoe as a tripod. So I made that decision early on that it would be short form content, and that's the way I wanted to tell stories, and I would use these long form videos really as snapshots of the boat at different stages in the renovation that I could look back on or you could watch and you can see more detail about what's gone on and what's happened but I'm not a particularly good vlogger and I like to make videos that are considered and I like to kind of think about telling a story or trying my best to and I therefore knew that if you just had me waffling in front of a camera saying well I think this is how you install a kitchen but I don't really know because this is the first time I've ever installed a kitchen it doesn't make for great content so I start with short form and if you are new to this, and this might be the first video you're seeing, this probably isn't a great retention, but go and watch all the short forms. They're on my Instagram, my TikTok. I recommend going to my Instagram. It's at Johnny Sturgeon. It's got all of the videos. It's got more photos. It's got stories saved on highlights. You get a real snapshot, not just a snapshot, you get to see the entire boat build from start to finish. So this is going to be about maybe a 20 minute video and hopefully I'm just going to walk you through the boat, you can leave if you want, and I'm going to walk you through the boat and I'm going to show you in more detail everything I've done in the last four or five months because the truth is it's a lot different to the last time you saw it but I'm quite proud of it and I've worked hard on it and it's taken a, a long time coming but hopefully this afternoon I'm going to start decorating. Uh, I've got a little radiator on to heat it up, it's pretty cold and chilly this time of year, it's kind of starting in November, hence the dodgy five day moustache. For November but you know today's the last day that these walls are going to be this lovely marble effect black and white and these walls behind you that you'll see in a second are still the bare wood and I wanted to film this so that I could look back on it and see where I've come from in terms of the build and what I've done and then there'll be other videos other long form videos once it's all finished and there's a lot of work to be done don't worry there's a lot more short form content to come there's tiling and decorating and plumbing and wiring and upholstery and my engine and my swim deck and the windows to go in here and there's a million things still to be done. I'm a long way off finishing and I'm far from done but there'll be a few more long form videos but just to let you know and clarify, I'm not a vlogger. Uh, you can see I'm still currently waffling. This is just going to be a nice little tour and I, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Let's begin. As you can see, uh, I wasn't joking, he was just propped up on a toolbox. So I'm going to try and be as quick as I, pa as I possibly can. I have a habit of waffling in any tour or video I do. So I'm going to split it into a few sections and they'll all be signposted at the bottom of the video. First things first is we are positioned on the left hand side. I'm just going to use regular terms, not boating terms. I'm not going to call the bathroom heads or the kitchen's a galley or whatever. We're on the left hand side at the back. And first things first is you'll see this door. Uh, it's a brand new door. I thought about the layout, I went through about 140 layouts and every single part of this boat is considered and carefully thought out both in terms of ballast and making sure I'm, I'm the right weight and making sure I'm taking account of headspace where I can, not having to carve into these you know, very thick closed cell phone walls and the, the door at the back was therefore the best and perhaps the only solution for this lifeboat. Not all lifeboats are the same but for this lifeboat a door here was the best solution. So it's a teardrop style door, one that you would get on a regular teardrop. And it's pretty great. It's got a small sliding window as well as a little uh, mesh thing so that in the summer no flies get in or mozzies or whatever you want to have as your, your, your threat of choice. When you enter, there's a small coir matting area. It's not fully finished, it's not sealed up. There'll be a few coat hangers and space for shoes. Down here, immediately on your right, is a, a rope locker of sorts. It's a horrible, messy, ugly little space. So instead of trying to fiberglass it all, I've just got two buckets. I draw the bottom bucket in to the, the floor below, and then the top bucket sits in it. Uh, you can't quite see. I've got a few hooks up there. It's a bit dark. Uh, I've got a load of storage in there, and that's just for any mooring lines. Once again, as a reminder, this boat is just a canal boat, so I don't need to worry about having insurmountable numbers of fenders and life jackets 
everything is all kind of thought out and space wise is accounted for. So that's just for slightly wet and damp mooring line. It's a smallish space. You're going to have to duck your head a little bit. But once you enter down and get off this step, you can stand up with perfect amble head height. As long as you're under about six foot one, six foot two, you can stand everywhere in the boat without problem. So as you come in immediately to your left, you've got this long storage unit. I accounted for storage in every single thing you could need. And then I added these four units. So this is probably where all of my rubbish is going to end up. I'll put a bin in one of those and then it's just going to be household goods, toilet roll, kitchen roll, um, bleach, you know, whatever, whatever I need just goes in there. Uh, and then all of this I'll show you in the kitchen as well. We'll similarly have a tiled splashback and it's just a nice little place that when you, you get in, you hang your jacket up, you put your shoes off, pop your keys. It's just simple stuff. To the right of the entrance, and I apologise if I'm jumping around too much, I'm not going to you know, flip the camera to me and show you around. I just want to make it as clear as I can. So you've come in through the door, down into here, and there'll be a door that I need to build that, that swings inwards, and you're in the bathroom. I put the bathroom here at the back purely because of the space. It, it seemed like the most sensible solution. It's a raised up area with a slanted ceiling. You can't do all that much in an area with a slanted ceiling other than put a chemical toilet. And, uh, you know, it's fine, it's a bit taboo or weird to be talking about bathroom solutions, but there'll be a small little chemical toilet and it's one that you have to sit down on no, no matter what. So having a slanted ceiling is fine. There's a little shelf there behind for knickknacks, maybe toilet roll. In the corner here with the window, I've, I've built a small little shower and I will be treating this shower exactly as if it was a wooden boat. So it will get three or four coats of T-Mac uh, kind of primer and then two coats of top coat, which is all being colour matched very kindly. And what you therefore get is you have basically built the equivalent of a small enclosed wooden shower that is perfectly watertight. You can't see, it's all a bit of a mess, but there's, there's a bench that sits there. You can't stand up in it unless you're under 5'11", so I, I can't actually stand up and have a shower. Um, but I put a little bench in and because water is limited on this boat, I don't have huge water capacity. You know, I might shower every other day and have a quick shower and then shower in gyms or wherever I am or at friends or whatnot. And I've tried to build it. And this is where I'm going to sound like a bit of a, for, for want of a better word, a bit of a knob sounding a bit like all architectural. But the space has curves and it has weird shapes. And I've tried to kind of mimic that and make it cave like and the painting for this room, as you can see, I've gone for half height cladding with a dado rail and that wraps around all the way here. All of the stuff under here and including these cupboards will be painted kind of a pink terracotta red and everything above will be white. And the only exception to that rule is that the shower too in the whole enclosed area will also be a colour matched pink. So it kind of feels like a cosy nook and therefore the, the angles and the curves hopefully tie it together and bring it together. Then in here is just a small, it's also currently being used as a dodgy storage area and I need to finish it all off but this is just a bit of a vanity unit and in there I will have a small diesel heater as well as a little water heater you can see also there's a big window there uh, I'm not having a vent or a fan in this room and I, maybe I will do later down the line I'll have a small little airflow vent in the door certainly but this window once I put if I have a, a shower and it's steamy and I put my curtain I draw my curtain across and open that window and I'm hoping that will solve most of any damp problems. And these walls, they're all fiberglass anyway. These are all waterproof. They will get treated in the same way as the wood, just so it's all colour matched. Despite what I just said about not doing many kind of front facing vlogs and jumping the camera around too much, you can see that actually in terms of head height, you know, I can't, I can just about touch the ceiling if I jump. And if you've ever been on a boat, I'm sorry, this is probably a terrible boat, ang terrible camera angle. If you've ever been on a boat, You'll know that a bathroom or head, as they call it, is a fairly small and limited space. Usually your, your toilet is in a wet room. So if you have a shower, you've got a toilet that gets wet and it's all covered anyway. But, you know, I, I think this is for a bathroom, at least on a boat. It it's not bad going. You can stand here. You can walk around. Uh, you can get changed in here. You can use a toilet with ample space. There's a shower with ample space and there's a cabinet with ample space. And also because of the light in here being fairly limited, what I've done is if you jump around above the door, uh, I've, I've installed two kind of window areas. Now the original mouldy, leaky windows, they're not good enough for the exterior grade of the boat, but you can pop them in here and that's what I'll be doing. Uh, it's a nod to the old part of the boat. Maybe I'll frost them anyway, but it just lets in all the light from, there's a big set of light uh, of windows in the bridge area that I'll show on the other side of the wall, but that will just fill this space with light and 
you know, all in all for a bathroom on a boat. I'm pretty proud of it. Now, as you leave the bathroom, you remember the door and the entranceway is here and all of the cupboards. Uh, it's worth noting this isn't like a flipped version. The camera hasn't flipped. This is the actual layout. This is the left, that's the right hand side. So as you leave the bathroom to your right and you enter into here, the corridor's a little narrow. Um, it's, I don't know, maybe 40 centimeters wide. That's off the top of my head, I've got no clue. Uh, 40, 50 centimeters wide. But as you come in, you see what the boat is really all about. It's a space that is surprisingly big. And when I bought the boat, a lot of people said, oh, that's gonna be claustrophobic and dark. And and I was a bit nervous. I thought it might be, I couldn't actually stand up originally when I bought the boat, but really what you've got here is so much space. And I, I think personally, it's great. It's a cold early November morning and you can already see the light that's just bouncing in and that's all, only gonna get better throughout the day. So as you come in, I'll just quickly pan around and show where we've come from. That's the toolbox you, you, uh, you were resting on earlier, but here is the kitchen. The kitchen was originally gonna come to here and I decided against it. That's why I moved a unit from here into the bathroom that you just saw in the vanity unit. It's all sealed up. Uh, a lot of people have said, are you worried about using chipboard on a kitchen? And there's a few things to take into account. Firstly, she's a canal boat. She's not the regular marine environment. Uh, secondly, this isn't some kind of cheap kitchen from a off the shelf store that you can buy that I'm not gonna name. It's a flat pack Swedish company. You know, this is a, a very, at least for me, quite an expensive kitchen. It's the kind of the top you can buy. I bought it from a trade only place and all of the back edges I've then sealed with extra wood glue, three coats of waterproof wood glue. So I'm not worried about that. And then also it's worth noting that there's a professional trawler yard just over there. I spoke to a few of the blokes who worked there and they said, yeah, we, we just, we pop these kitchens in on the trawlers and you know, they're making three million pound trawlers that go to sea for a week and a half at a time in the worst weather you can imagine. And this is a nice little canal boat just bobbing along the, the inland riverways of, of the UK and Europe. So I'm not worried about using an OSB chipboard kitchen. The kitchen itself, I've just gone for a, a currently white. I might paint it. Um, that's to be decided later down the line. I think once I get a feel for the space. Gone for a shaker style, which is kind of a traditional, you can see there, uh, like a panel area, but nice and simple. And I've gone for a warm oak and it's a laminate worktop just because of cost. The kitchen, I didn't go for stainless. I also didn't go for kind of a ceramic. This is a composite. So it might stain a bit better, a bit worse than if it was a proper one, but it's nice and lightweight and it's white. And I can kind of imagine just doing my washing up here, looking at these windows are huge. They're 90 centimeters by a meter or, or thereabouts, something like that. Uh, they slide back and forth. They lock with four cam locks in each corner and I'll put a deadbolt on there. They're eight mil offshore grade polycarb. It's the stuff they use on the offshore lifeboats. I've been told that if someone tries to break that, they'll break their wrist before their a hammer gets anywhere near to even getting inside. I don't want to try it, but I, you know, I think they really just frame this whole area. There's one on that side and there's also one on this side. I've got a 12 volt, 65 litre Boo fridge from Autoterm who very kindly uh, gifted it to me. And there'll be a, a link in the description at some point with kind of a discount code if you if you want one. I haven't set all the wiring up, but you know, it's a pretty good fridge. And for my needs, it's got everything you could, you could possibly uh, want. And I might put a small little kind of cutlery or just pull out drawer there as well. I've done all of the plinths and there'll also be a tile splashback to go in. Hopefully at some point this week or next week, it's a, bit of a exciting something that I'm really and this was maybe sad I'm really quite excited about is I'm going to go and do a, a small little pottery workshop and make the, the tiles myself and glaze them myself and then uh, install them so I haven't exactly decided on the color but they'll go be going in there and as I mentioned if you look up in this area you've got about nine feet worth of head height and you've got windows all around flooding this space with light and to me, at least, this is this is why I bought the boat. Um, you're never going to get this on a regular boat. You're never going to get this in a, a yacht of eight and a half metres. It's a pretty special space to be stood in. And maybe I sound like a an airy fairy knob right now, but, you know, I'm, I'm, I really like this space. Uh, in terms of decorating, I, as I said, we start decorating. I should point out, I cut my finger. I don't just have black duct tape on it. I cut my finger with a bit of tissue paper. Sorry about that. Um, as I said, I'm gonna start painting soon. All of these walls are gonna get two or three coats of uh, anti-condensation galley paint uh, made by T-Mac. I'm told it's brilliant stuff. And then on top of that, uh, everything's all, and the wood will be treated too. On top of that, the bathroom, the bedroom is gonna go like a, a green 13, a pistachio sage green. 
The main area will have white walls with blue benches and uh, a dark, like a, a teal benches rather, and a dark teal upholstery. And then the bathroom, as you can see here, that's the kind of pinky red terracotta red 03 from Lick that I was talking about with a pinky white uh, top half. It's the first kitchen that I've ever built. And I'm sorry if I'm waffling at this point, but it's, it's the first kitchen I've ever built. It was a lot harder than I thought. Everything has to have been cut out at the back because of these benches being structural. And I obviously have to account for weight and whatnot. So you can see there, actually, that's just the back of a bench. And I've sealed it up and it doesn't look too bad, but you know, you can get a couple of tins in there and no one's gonna see it. And then um, that's obviously a duff drawer, like you can't do it because that's where the sink is. There's a cutlery drawer there. Uh, and then there's a, a cupboard in here that wraps around. It's currently a bit of a nightmare storage unit. And in the corner just there is an access hatch to a small little space here, which is where I can run all my wiring and plumbing and join the, the water systems and the electric systems out and behind, you know, secretive and tucked away that no one therefore has to see. And you might notice that I'm about to start decorating and I haven't really got any electrical or conduit. And the beauty of this boat and the beauty of many lifeboats is that they are built in two halves. So if you jump down here, you can see that actually ready-made, as if, as if by magic, perfectly so, is a small little channel where I'm going to run all of my conduit. These are the benches, and on this side, the right-hand side is more of a sofa. It's currently also a, a large wood storage pile. Uh, all of these items, these they can pull out, uh, and they become an extra bed here, and also an extra bed here for friends. And there'll be upholstered cushions on top, but also backrests that cover that channel, and then they act as infills to, to widen the full width of the bed. You can see in there, I've also got a small, uh, nice little like, 20 centimeter, 25 centimeter porthole, which just adds a bit more light. And I've also got one on this side. On the left-hand side is more of the dining area. So it's slightly longer. Uh, there'll be a table that goes here that lifts up and it can be one that's on a gimbal. So it can be pushed into the corner and then pulled out. And then I might also have it flip over and then have like a support stand for when I do have multiple people over because I can pull out this bench, this bench, that little box bench, uh, there's two of these, both for storage. If I pull those out into the middle, by my calculations and estimations, and maybe you think I'm being over generous with my ability here, I think I should be able to have about eight people for dinner. Uh, a nice little window there. And then this is my window seat, where once I'm on the water and I'm on the, the canals and the rivers, I imagine I can just, you know, plonk myself down there and look out and watch as the, the world goes by, which might sound sad for a, a young 20, early 20 something bloke, but I'm really looking forward to that at least. And I will also have uh, some kind of blinds or curtains just for privacy. I tried that one-way tinted window stuff. I didn't realise that actually that's based on light levels as opposed to direction, which meant that during the day it would be great. But at night, if I had the lights on in here, I wouldn't be able to look out and it'd be quite like a zoo. Oh, there's a little boat going by. Quite a big boat. Um, so I just, it wouldn't work. So I'm going to stick with it as is and then have like a, maybe a little shutter or a blind that, that runs down. As you can see, there's a few access hatches everywhere. I haven't lost any space. The underneath here is about half a ton of ballast. Uh, I've gone for just aggregate double bagged as, as my primary ballast. And if I need to change it, I can always move it and add heavier stuff, maybe some lead. And there's also a 450 liter custom water tank, like a bladder tank, one of the, the sacks, because it's a four meter long space. I think it's 60 centimeters wide, but it's only 20 centimeters, 200 mil tall. So it had to be custom made and that will be going in there and that will serve me enough water if I'm frugal with a shower, you know, to last me a week or two, if not, well, hopefully two weeks, if not a bit longer. Moving forwards into the fore cabin uh, and the only real dedicated cabin space, there'll be a curtain that divides this room, just a nice little white light, kind of maybe even linen, just something soft. Uh, and then moving into here is, is the bedroom. So you can see that on either side, there is ample storage. Both of these top two cupboards on both sides will be clothing space. So I've got a small little shelf for I'll put some storage boxes and then I'll put a clothes rail in here uh, and then all my clothes can hang up there. In this one underneath there will be all of my electrical components, so my inverters and my solar charge controllers. So I have easy access to them, but they're kind of tucked away. And then on the other side, it's basically the exact same. Loads of storage up in this top one for, for clothes and my own personal goods. And then down there will be a laundry bag. You know, you've really got to think about everything you're going to use on a day-to-day -day basis when you build this boat. And a few months ago, I sat down and I spent a week really, you know, every single time I use something in the house, I made a note of it, whether that was, okay, well, I need a recycling bin. I need someone to put my laundry. I need somewhere to put X, Y, and Z. And I've tried to account for all of that. 
Uh, the same is then in here, underneath the bed, and this will all be a custom sprung mattress. Uh, underneath here is also more storage. There's top access and there's also front access. I will put my batteries in there. They'll be ventilated, but they're lithium ion. So, you know, as long as I'm careful and cautious with them and make sure they're held down and everything is okay, they'll be safe underneath the bed. And then moving around into the bedroom, it's, it's kind of the last bit of the space. I've got a huge window up there, another little porthole there because my intention is to sleep beam on. So my head would be here and my feet are there. It's in, in, in length this way, it's 30 centimeters or 40 centimeters longer than a regular bed. And obviously it tapers. So this is full width. It's about king in total, but maybe double. And, you know, you, you can sleep there with heads there and have mates over and we had to you know, have a sleepover and it was, you know, it was fine. It was loads of space. Continued the half height cladding. I've done it up in a, as smooth as a curve as I can. And there'll be, this is all going to be covered up. I just need to paint this with the anti-condensation paint first, but there'll be a kind of a, an access shelf into there in a box. And then this will be my, my bookshelf and I'll clad it and make it look nicer. Um, and I'll have a small little light here and some storage hanging and Maybe even put a little uh, platform there that you can pop a laptop on if you're watching something in bed. I'm not really a big television person. Maybe I'll put a TV there, but it's it's not really a huge consideration for me. You'll also see throughout all of the boat, I've made use of what I think to be absolutely wonderful angle mouldings. They hide all of my otherwise poor craftsmanship and just really improve the space and make it look like this is something semi-habitable. And once it's all painted, hopefully you won't see all the small markings and... And then there's also a huge, uh, obviously, a, like a, a warmer or a darker oak laminate floor to go in, which should match the, the kitchen. And that is absolutely everything in this project that I've done to date. The exterior is all painted a darkish blue. And there's still a lot of work to be done outside with the installation of uh, metal grab rails. And I've got most of my cleats on, but a, a few kind of bits of hardware, my outboard, a swim deck. I'm considering putting a roof deck in here for somewhere to hang out. I've also got all of the solar panels to go on. And as I said, nothing in here is wired or plumbed yet. So I'm a long way off finishing. I've still got a couple of months, but as you can see, the space already is certainly one that you could live in. It, it's certainly one that is habitable. I find it's taken me 14 months to get to this stage, which is a lot longer than I thought it would. But I think what I've got is something that I'm pretty proud of and she should stand me the test of time. As long as I look after her, she'll look after me. It's highly likely that the next long form video you see from me might even be the final tour video. So maybe there'll be one or two in the meantime talking about the outboard and the exterior work. But I just want to say thank you to everyone who supported. Once again, it's uh, not just to the individuals who bought t-shirts and caps and donated, but also to the companies who have supported the project and in doing so supported me and everyone else who's also just watched these videos and dropped a follow and a like. I, I feel immeasurably grateful to be able to say that this this space is mine. And there might be some people watching online who think, that's a load of crap, that's horrible. You know, fuck, you can't even stand up in here and all, all of the issues with it. And it's not perfect and not everyone's gonna love it, but for whatever reason I do, and I'm so very grateful. And thank you for watching this video and I wish you the best of luck in whatever you're doing. Thank you very much.